The Pittsburgh Steelers have a new offensive coordinator. And if you watched the podcast yesterday, we brought in somebody from Atlanta to kind of dive into who Arthur Smith was and why he maybe was a bit more of an impressive coach and an impressive play caller than what we get on the outside and just the small sample size that I believe Pittsburgh Steelers fans and a lot of the media have taken from his time in Atlanta. And it brought plenty of optimism. But man, some people are having a field day going off about this hire. And this might have been the worst take yet. And I think it's laughable. And I had to share it with you guys. What's going on, everybody? I'm Noah Strackbine. Thank you for jumping on to Steelers To Go, your daily to-go cup of Pittsburgh Steelers news and analysis. Find us on YouTube.com slash All Steelers Talkers. Subscribe anywhere. You get your podcast. The Pittsburgh Steelers, like we said, have a new offensive coordinator. If you did not check out our interview with Daniel Flick yesterday, Atlanta Falcons beat reporter down at SI Falcons Report, check that out because there was plenty of optimism that left there. There was plenty of insight that I walked away personally thinking man I feel a lot better about the Pittsburgh Steelers offensive coordinator hire of Arthur Smith than I did 20 minutes ago and that I've felt the entire time and yeah maybe it wasn't the biggest splash maybe it's not a Clint Kubiak whatever this guy is impressive and I think even the people in Atlanta even though things didn't go well believe that this guy has so much potential and does so much good as a play caller and to step back into an OC role there's optimism there's a lot of positivity that comes with it and there's a lot of potential that comes with Arthur Smith but not everybody sees that and some takes are worse than others some are simple like Willie Cologne saying that he hates the hire and that's understandable I get it some of them are way out in left field. Some of them are thrown up against the wall and just trying to cause as much chaos as humanly possible. And I get it. Some people do that. I do that sometimes. But I always stand behind what I say and I always kind of feel, hey, look it. I feel this way and I think to a degree it's right. Sometimes these things are just totally wrong. And this one, I feel I had to share. Roto World Football Show's Patrick Darty and Denny Carter discussed the hire of Arthur Smith and man they had some hot takes to go along with it quote saying I have never seen a less serious hire than going from Matt Canada to Arthur Smith we found the only person uniformly worse uniformly worse than Matt Canada what that's where this starts And we'll dive into that in a second. But there's more that come. They continued, I thought it was a joke. I thought they were messing around when they said they're interviewing Arthur Smith. We're only one year removed from 2022 when the Falcons were third in rush EPA and fifth in rush success rate. So they have been good. Last year was catastrophic after they drafted B. John Robinson. Their rushing efficiency fell off a cliff with B. John Robinson. I can't really piece those two things together. We'll stop there for now. Let's start with the Matt Canada thing. I'm sorry, but for Matt, for Matt Canada's tenure, for three years in Pittsburgh, I sat around, I came on this show, I talked to fans, I talked to everybody I could, and not one person, not one, thought Matt Canada was not the problem. Everyone agreed that Matt Canada's offense was not fit for the NFL and that it was just not a job that he was fit for and that the Steelers struggles were on Matt Canada, that he was hands down the worst offensive coordinator in football, including his time as an offensive coordinator while Arthur Smith was also an offensive coordinator. But apparently the Steelers got somebody who's uniformly worse. It's almost as if people forget that the last time Arthur Smith was an OC, and I'm not trying to sit here and say that this guy is going to bring the Pittsburgh Steelers to a Super Bowl, I'm just saying at times you have to be realistic about a situation, and this is by far the most unrealistic approach you could possibly have. And they came back to kind of shoot themselves in the foot and prove themselves that, oh, maybe we are being a little dramatic about the situation. 
His time in Tennessee, he not only helped Ryan Tannehill become a Pro Bowler, his only Pro Bowl season, and win Comeback Player of the Year, but they went to the AFC Championship game. Derrick Henry was an absolute monster, and that offense was, well, pretty dominant for the second half and really a good chunk of that season. They were a huge reason why the Tennessee Titans got to where they needed to be, and then he continued to improve that next season and then went to Atlanta, where, as they pointed out, the Falcons finished third in rushing EPA and fifth in rushing success rate. So he knows how to run the football. And yeah, I get it. He didn't do the crazy things that B. John Robinson was supposed to do as a rookie in the NFL. But if you listened to the interview yesterday with Daniel Flick, he talks about how B. John's 1,400 yards from scrimmage was an Atlanta rookie record. So he's done good things. Kyle Pitts as a rookie was nearly a thousand yard receiver. Drake London was the same thing. Kyle Pitts was injured this past year and Drake London still had a pretty decent season. So you're dealing with a guy who, yeah, maybe isn't built to be a head coach and maybe isn't supposed to have that job, but not everybody is. But there are a lot of guys. If you are sitting around thinking Cliff Kingsbury is going to be a dominant OC in the NFL and this guy is a top tier hire and I can't believe the Pittsburgh Steelers didn't hire that guy or at least didn't interview that guy. What is your problem with Arthur Smith? Why do you look at one and say that guy stunk as a head coach, but he's probably a really good offensive play caller, but the other one isn't? That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And you got to understand that those are two totally different jobs. As a head coach, you have pressure from every direction. It is your decision to get guys involved. It is your decision to rotate an offense and do this and do that. And you're getting talked to from so many different directions. You have so much on your plate. As an offensive play caller, all you do is go out and you run the offense. And you could talk about, oh, well, he didn't get his guys involved. His last year in Tennessee, A.J. Brown and Corey Dillon had 200 combined targets, I believe, that season. Derrick Henry was nearly a 2,000-yard runner. If he wasn't a 2,000-yard runner, Jonu Smith was an absolute monster at tight end, and Ryan Tannehill was a pro bowler. He utilized his weapons. He knew exactly how to utilize his weapons. He got guys open. He drew up route concepts that weren't Matt Canada's high school route concepts. You got to look at it realistically. You got to say, look, it may not have been my favorite hire. It may not have been the hire that I think takes the Pittsburgh Steelers to great lengths and wins them a Super Bowl. And I was holding out for Clint Kubiak or I was holding out for Cliff Kingsbury or so on and so forth. But to sit around and say, hey, this is worse than Matt Canada. Come on. It's not. It's not even close. It's not even close. You could have hired anybody. You could have hired Eddie Faulkner and Mike Sullivan, and it would have been a step forward than where they were the last three years with Matt Canada. It's not worse. And Arthur Smith might not be perfect, and there might be some concern, but this guy had a ton of attention around the NFL because teams understand that he is a good play caller and has the capabilities of being a good play caller. And who knows if his head coaching stunt ruined him and made things a lot worse. I don't know, but he's got a lot of success. Desmond Ritter, at one point, during a stretch of last season, was the second leading passing yards quarterback in the NFL, trailing only Patrick Mahomes. That's impressive. He took steps. He had moments. Everybody had moments with Arthur Smith. And again, maybe he's not Clint Kubiak, and if I was the Pittsburgh Steelers, I would have held out for somebody in the Super Bowl. That's how I feel. But to sit around and have quotes that say, I've never seen a less serious hire than going from Matt Canada to Arthur Smith. We found the only person uniformly worse. The only person uniformly worse. We've talked about a lot of bad takes. Florio has talked about how Mike Tomlin's going to step away from the team and how his wife I mean, Schefter said his wife loves L.A., and because of that, chances are he's going to the Chargers. We've talked about all the nonsense all offseason long, and there will be plenty more, trust me. But, man, this one might top the cake because as a Pittsburgh Steelers analyst and for all of you, every single person listening, saying, look, at, I've, I've watched the Pittsburgh Steelers the last three seasons. I've watched Matt Canada's offense. And then for you to follow that up and say, yeah, I think Arthur Smith is worse, you're lying to yourself. 
And everybody laughed at that quote just like I did. Everybody who's watched the Matt Canada offense as deeply as we have laughed at that quote and said, yeah, that's not even close to true. It's not worse. It may not have been the shoot for the stars. This is the biggest thing ever higher. But I think the Pittsburgh Steelers believe that they made a splash with this one because Arthur Smith has a lot of potential and has done a lot of good in the NFL. And it is a massive step forward from what they've had the last three seasons. And maybe it doesn't work out the way that everybody wants it to. Maybe they're unable to figure the quarterback situation out with Kenny Pickett or whoever. Maybe there's whatever that holds them back. But for right now, if you are somebody who's saying, man, this is worse, you're lying to yourself. And you're lying to every Steelers fan out there. 